Welcome back. You're right in time for women in leadership. My guest this morning, Honorable Pamela Ateka, she is the founder of Community Focus Group, as well as Women in Democracy and Governance, and she is currently vying for the position of Senator in Nairobi County. Mheshimiwa, karibu sana. Asante sana. All right. Before we get to the politics bit of it, how about we start from the organization, CFG. What pushed you to form this organization? CFG was started um, a long time, and it didn't start with me alone. Mm -hmm. I was with others. Mm. And when we got together, we, um, we began, and we worked when there was HIV AIDS. Mm. And I've seen that Moriyuki died, the, the guy who was heading. Um, the HIV AIDS fight, fight long time ago. Yeah. So um, there were vulnerable children in the society. Um, these children would not have food. They would go to school hungry. And as a poet uh, and an artist, and together with others, we thought that this is a good thing that we should be able to um, use our talents and be able to help the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so you obviously deal with an array of issues. There's culture, there's arts, education, health. And for the purpose of this conversation, I want us to focus a bit on education and health, given the fact that a good number of organizations when they start up, they are always key to focus on education and health. For you specifically, why this pertinent issues? Well, um, education and health are very important factors in the community mm -hmm. because, one, without health, you cannot have a community. Mm -hmm. Without education, you cannot be able to transform mm -hmm. the community. Um, in our work as community focus group, we've been able to um, d work with teenage mothers, mm -hmm. helping them gather skills so that they can be f able to forge sustainable livelihoods. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy work. It's not an easy job because you need to fundraise, yeah. you need to reach out to other people and you know the I mean most organizations are usually on fundraising mode mm -hmm. and that's what really curbs a lot and, and makes organizations not really deliver mm -hmm. because of that um, challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. When it comes to education and health, obviously these are issues that cut across. They don't affect a demogra a specific demographic. So when it comes to that, which kind of persons were you really targeting and focusing on on these particular issues? We were focusing on children. Mm -hmm. We were focusing on uh, teenage mothers. And we would... Um, also reach out to communities to tell them about gender-based violence mm. because it's also a part of a health issue yeah. and as you realize in the community right now there are many children and many girls who are going through a lot of gender-based violence yes. it's become very rampant in our society and that's something that needs to be curbed mm -hmm. so what are the gains that have been made so far uh the, there are a lot of gains because in this fight Many organizations have come up, many um, women, many, many political leaders have also taken the, the they've also taken the fore and mm -hmm. they've come out to also speak very heavily about gender-based violence, okay. about health and education. Mm -hmm. Then Women in Democracy and Governance, you formed it in 2011. What is the aim of that? The aim was to raise girls, the aim was to um, train women, the aim was to inspire women and girls mm -hmm. to get into leadership posts mm -hmm. and especially elective posts mm -hmm. so that we can also have <laughs> a chance yes. in the democracy of our country. I like that, especially elective posts. How many have you inspired so far? We've inspired a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I remember even with the, the recent, um, in the recent training that we've had with many other organizations, yes. we were able to uh, rally a lot of women to come and vie for elective posts mm -hmm. and even we have even formed a women aspirants group that has you know that goes across the 47 counties it has women who are running for governors women who are running for senators women who are running as mcas you know it has women from all the counties running for elective mm -hmm. posts mm -hmm. and that's a very good thing mm -hmm. in our democracy and you've inspired and continue to empower more of them to get into this position yes which is actually what you are also doing vying for that senatorial position in Nairobi county but you didn't start now 
in 2008, you vied for a parliamentary position in Embakasi. You came fourth out of 15 candidates. In 2011, you lost in the ODM nominations. Now you're coming back to vie for position of Senator in Nairobi County. What are some of those lessons that you've learned that in these two attempts, whereby you failed, you're applying in this particular election? The, the most prominent lesson I learned was courage. <laughs> <laughs> courage is something that you cannot learn from school. Mm -hmm. Courage is something that nobody can give to you. Mm. Courage is something that just has to come from within you and a bit of it without, w w without you. Mm -hmm. As in like, it's a multi-pronged um, collection of energies and synergies. You have to inspire yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to get inspired by others. You have to look deep within you and get it out of you. Mm. And you also have to involve a spiritual being, mm. and in this sense, God, in inspiring yourself and getting courageous. Mm -hmm. So when you look at these lessons that you learned, do they form part of your strategy even as you're vying for this seat? I would say yes. Okay. Yes. And in the process, I'm also learning from others. Okay. Because... Um, Leadership is a transformational thing. It's what we call becoming. And one of the things that I've learned in, in the process of learning from my work in civic engagement in mm -hmm. the community, mm -hmm. in my travels, in engaging with people, in engaging with leaders, as well as you know other people from the other spheres, is to learn from them. Take what they give me in terms of experiences, best practices, yeah. and see how I can use this in terms of strategy. Mm -hmm. When I was running um, in Embakasi, which was a lot of years ago, mm -hmm. and at that time it was very, very dangerous because Mugiki was really Mugiki, mm -hmm. you know? And I was running against very, very strong formidable forces. Waitito, Kalembendile, mm -hmm. Esther Pasaris, you know, and the rest of the team. And I was really pretty young then, mm -hmm. so it was like a new thing, a new, a new sphere. And I learned that when you want to do something, you just have to go and do it. Mm -hmm. There's no other way but just to do it. Mm -hmm. and, there, and people are supportive, people are out there, and that what, that's what I would tell many women, that all you need to do is just have the courage you have people, you have people who um, are willing to help you. There are people who are voting for you. There are people who are, have your best interests at heart. Mm. And there are people who really love our community and love our country, Kenya. And they are able to come up to your support. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you really learned a lot of that courage around that time. But you are vying via the Kanu ticket in Nairobi. Much of what we know about Kanu is that it's predominant in the Rift Valley region, particularly areas around Baringo, where its chairman come, ca comes from. What makes you think you'll bag this seat via the Kanu ticket in Nairobi? I think Nairobi people are very good people. Okay. They are not looking at parties. They are not looking at, at, at collisions. They are looking at leaders. You see, for a very long time, we've, had, we've been led by politicians. Mm -hmm. And Nairobians are looking for leaders. Because politicians look at the next election, you know, they will come to you and tell you, vote for me because of the next election. Mm -hmm. But I believe that Nairobians are looking for leaders who are looking at the next generation. Okay. What does the next generation need? Where have these people taken our country? Mm -hmm. I mean, haven't we had enough, you know? Mm. Haven't we gotten angry enough? Angry enough means that we're able to rise up as women, as youth, as people who want transformational leadership and get into elective posts and get going. Mm -hmm. All right, makes a lot of sense. Get into elective posts and get going. Speaking of that elective post, I mean, when you look at the politics of affirmative action, that giving of favors to perhaps individuals or groups that had been discriminated before and particularly when it comes to women there's a lot of conversations surrounding the fact that women just need to go for those elective posts aside from being handed this post but then again we cannot dismiss the fact that a good number of our leaders they began from there 
being nominated to this post. In your perspective, do you feel like affirmative action has catapulted women to position of leadership? Yes, it has. Okay. And for now, me, I would say that women will get, will, will take everything that is going for them. All right. If it's elective posts, if it's affirmative action, we'll take everything mm -hmm. in terms of getting into leadership. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Mm. You see, somebody quoted and said that when you educate a man, you educate a man. But when you educate a woman, you're educating a generation. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it means that nonetheless, whether it's through affirmative action, elective posts, women just need to go at it. Yes. Okay. Martin Luther said that okay. whether it's crawling or walking mm -hmm. or running, mm -hmm. just get there. <laughs> <laughs> just try and find yourself and get there. Yes. You seek to replace Senator Johnson Sakaja, who has been in this position for the past five years. How would you rate his performance? Johnson Sakaja is a very good guy. Okay. And his performance is awesome. Mm -hmm. he, for, for me, I, I don't think that you get up by pulling others down. Mm -hmm. I think you get up by getting up. Getting up for yourself does not mean that I need to pull you down for me to get up. Mm -hmm. We all need to work together to get each other up as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Your going down does not mean my rising up. And that's why as the Kanu party we say, love, peace, and unity. Mm -hmm. And that is what is going to bring our country back to where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. In terms of service delivery per se and proper representation of Nairobians in Parliament, specifically the Senate, do you feel he has done that as to par? I, I totally feel, but I wouldn't want to go into Johnson Sakaja and how he has yes, performed. Yes, I, I would want to go into what am I going to do uh -huh. for the people of Nairobi. Uh -huh. As in like... You see, why I'm asking that is because I want to get your perspective, not as a leader per se, but just as a Kenyan. And th this is because there's always that narrative of we get to elect leaders, but when they get to that position, they sort of like forget. Then they come back after five years and seek the same positions. So this is just me getting your mind as a Kenyan. Have you been fully represented by this senator? And, and I, that's it. I do totally understand you. Okay. For me, my run is not about who has not done what. All right. My run is about what am I bringing mm -hmm. and what am I becoming and what am I going to do for the people of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would stay, say again that I don't believe in leadership that has to tear somebody down to get up. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in leadership that, you know, like in many organizations, I've seen this happen, even in politics, that you feel that your space is being taken by someone and you always need to fight people. Mm -hmm. I believe the world was created with a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. The world has everything that is enough for all of us. Mm -hmm. It's just that self selfishness has made it um, in a way that we are not able to share to love and to care. Mm -hmm. There is no kindness, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the, what is lacking in the world right now is kindness. You know, where is kindness in all of this? Where is kindness? Even in running for politics, where is kindness? Mm -hmm. You know, whoever you believe your God to be, you know, is it Allah, is it Hashem, is it Yahweh, is it, you know, Jesus, where is your kindness? That's, that's what I would look at. Mm -hmm. We don't rise by tearing each other down. Even in politics, even in religion, even in, in schools, in organizations, there are all these, you know, cut fights. Like, you know, as a woman, we've always been told um, women are their best, you know, their worst enemies. enemies. I don't believe that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Doreen, like, when I came, we, we, I mean, we are good friends. We would, we've, we, we will talk, we, we can discuss, we can, you know, forge a way forward. Mm -hmm. We don't have to tear each other down mm -hmm. for anything to be created. So basically you say the cake is big, just get your piece. Yes, look, look, look at where we are as a country right now. What has happened to us? Who, have we, who are we becoming? We've had, you know, spheres of ethnic crashes, you know, um, in many spots. Why? Because people feel you've taken my spot. People feel you're encroaching on my space. Mm -hmm. Really, the world is big enough for all of us. Okay. Kenya is big enough for all of us. Mm -hmm. If we can only just have a bit of kindness, a bit of knowing that you don't have to tear the other person down for you to get up. Mm -hmm. I don't have to hate you for me to make it. Mm -hmm. For real.
That, that doesn't work. A I think that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And okay. I would still go back to peace, love, and unity. All right. You know, whatever is yours will always become yours. Whatever is mine will always become mine. Mm -hmm. I would not love to go into the sphere of, let's tear this person down to get up. Mm -hmm. The world has enough resources for each of us. We just need more doses of kindness, yeah. more doses of goodness, so that we can all live together in unity. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is struggling to get rich. What is happening to the poor? What is happening to the single mothers? What is happening to those who don't have anything? Mm. That is what is making our world worse than it should be right now. Mm -hmm. What is happening in the political space that we are all fighting? Well, is that leadership or is that politics? Okay. I think that's... <laughs> Good question yes. for a Kenyan to answer. Yes. <laughs> All right. The Startup Bill 2020, it was a bill proposed by Senator Sakaj. And why I want us to discuss that a bit is because it's a very pertinent, still a pertinent issue. The bill sought to get a framework for tech development and coming up with sustainable entrepreneurship opportunities for young people to try and curb employment crisis in this country, and particularly in Nairobi. I mean, when you look at the issue of unemployment, clearly it just shows us that that ideas, we have them, they are good. Key in point, that particular bill. The question and the bone of contention is always the implementation and sustainability. Let me pick your mind on that. Well, when, when, when you look at ideas and youth unemployment, we have to look at it with a multi-pronged approach in terms of what can the government do? What can the counties do? Mm -hmm. What um, are we as Kenyans in terms of innovation? What can we do? What are other organizations doing like the private sector and everybody else? Yes. That's how I look at it. Because okay. most of our problems cannot be solved by one antidote mm -hmm. most of the time. It's all a multi-pronged approach. Are we sharing enough um, opportunities to young people? And as we share opportunities, are the young people applying for those opportunities? Because there's one thing to have an opportunity, mm. and there's another thing for you to apply for the opportunity. For example, there, is, um, there are all these resources that have been given by the government. Mm -hmm. Are the young people applying, applying for them? Are they forming groups and applying for those loans? Those are the things that we need to look into. Mm -hmm. So we, we cannot like just look at one one side of the story. We have to look at it as a multi-prong, you know, we, we must have a multi-prong approach to it in terms of where are the opportunities, where are the resources, where, where is the innovation of, for the young people, how can we um, engage all other sectors in, 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 in ensuring that the unemployment rate goes down. Okay. Yes. All right. Now, if elected senator, part of your role will include legislation. And I also want us to talk about that question or issue of gender-based violence. Because, again, when you look at the recent statistics done between January and June of 2020, around that period, it shows that the number of GBV cases in this country rose up to 92%, particularly in counties of Nairobi, Kakamega, Kisubu, Nakuru. And clearly, Nairobi takes a bigger chance. Chunk. So when it comes to perhaps a proposal of bills and passing of laws, when it comes to GBV, what would you do to curb that issue in the city? For me, more, mostly it would be more on implementation. Okay. How can, how can we have more teeth um, in terms of bringing it to justice um, those people who... Um, I mean, the, I mean, bringing to justice and having justice for the victims of GBV, mm -hmm. that would be my avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for you, it will be implementation. Yes. Bringing to justice. We have had that happen over and over again. What different thing would you do? Because there's always that question of this person was arrested. They were taken to court. They were even charged. But the issue still continues. I just want to know what you will do differently because looking at those numbers, it keeps rising day in, day out, and Nairobi forms a bigger chunk of those areas affected by gender-based violence. First of all, I would actually just go into and, 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 see, and look into um, the research of it. Okay. Like, for example, in most counties, what happens in terms of GBV, um, most um, of the victims that would go to the chief's place and the case would just disappear mm -hmm. because of many 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 things that happened there mm. so for me i would look at it in terms of um i would actually just first um <laughs> do, do my research in terms of how can we best um work on it 
that's how I would go about it. So let's assume this is a forum and Nairobians are here listening to you. You want to become their senator. Do you think they will buy that aspect of I will first do research? I mean, it's a very pertinent issue. Let's be real about it. Well, I think I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 uh, as an aspirant, yes. I'm in the process of also learning. Okay. I'm in the process of listening to people. Mm -hmm. I'm in the process of understanding the issues on the ground. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would say it will not just be me as Pamela mm -hmm. approach. It will be, you know, in terms of research, research, it means what do other people think? How would they go about it? Mm. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. All right, again, the question of health, which is again part of what you deal with even at a community focused group, still again a very pertinent issue in this country, not just in Nairobi, but even beyond. Late last year, we saw National Assembly passing that bill whereby it needs every Kenyan, adult Kenyan over age of 18 and above need to have an NHIF membership card. And part of the major reason that's why they were doing this is to provide and ensure that there's proper UHC. But even at that, there's still a good number of Kenyans who are still adamant and don't think it's as important. What is your perspective on that? I think Kenyans, Kenyans know what they want. I think Kenyans, um, you see, leadership is all about listening to the people. Mm. Leadership is all about also giving leadership. The two must come together. What do the Kenyans want? What do the Kenyans think? What do the leaders think? Then all these synergies should be merged and then a resolution is found. Mm -hmm. That's how Resolve goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a consensus. It's a it's consensus. Okay. It's listening to the people. What do the Kenyans think? What do the Kenyans want? Do the Kenyans mm -hmm. have the resources to, to do that? Mm -hmm. What do the leaders think? You know, in terms of the best way forward. Somebody quoted and said that leadership is about um, a good a, a leader will take you where you a good leader will take you where you want to go mm -hmm. but a best leader will take you where you don't necessarily want to go but you should be so it's actually an energy mm -hmm. a synergy of resources of you know energies what do you think what do i think and how can we come into a consensus mm -hmm. on the way forward? Mm -hmm. Where you don't want to necessarily go, but where you should be. Yes. So tying it to this particular issue could be something that Kenyans perhaps may not even have the resources to pay per se, but this is what is good for them. That's yes. what you're saying. Yes. All right. Okay, let's come to those issues facing women in leadership. And perhaps you can begin from the whole aspect of uh, the six women leaders who at least were able to back those big seats in 2017, the likes of Charity Ngilu, um, Senator Kihika, uh, Joyce Lab uh, Laboso, may God rest his soul in peace. When you look at these women that set they're being termed as those that set precedence. In your perspective, do you feel like they build some form of confidence for women to vie for particularly elective positions in this country? And in what way? Yes, they did a lot. Okay. They did a lot in terms of building um, confidence for the women. Mm -hmm. You see, usually when one woman does something, somebody quoted and said that when a woman joins politics, the woman changes. But when many more join politics, then the politics must change. And that's why you're having many women running mm -hmm. at this time. Okay. Because many women have seen that when one joined, mm -hmm. they, she changed. Mm -hmm. But when many joined, then the politics have become, have become different and the politics now must change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they really sort of like um, formed or created a base for women to vie for these positions. Yes, and a very good platform. Okay. Because we now have, we, ha we are now inspired by them. We now see, um, we now see the possibility of it. We now see how um, women can govern. And we now see even as in how we can also get into those spaces and be able to effect the change that we need. Mm -hmm. So clearly we can be in agreement that they set a precedence, they formed a base, sort of built confidence in women. But even at that, the latest research would show that when you compare the two previous elections, 2013 and 2017, the number of women leaders who got into elective positions rose from 145 to 172. So clearly it shows that we are sort of in the right direction 
direction. But even as that, women still face a lot of challenges. What has been your story? I mean, you have been here two previous times. What has been your story? Just like me and many other women, um, there are cultural barriers. Mm. There are, you know, economic barriers. Mm -hmm. And specifically, you know, like elections are very expensive. Oh, yes. As in running for elections as a woman is very, very hard. Because one, not only are there, you know, the cultural barriers, but still the economic barriers mm -hmm. that, you know, make you look at this thing and say, oh my. But still, we forge on mm -hmm. and we soldier on. Mm -hmm. You haven't answered my question yet. <laughs> You are all about inspiration yes. and you're all about um, telling women to go for these positions. I just want you to speak to that woman out there. Perhaps they feel like this is in them. Leadership is in them. And I want you to speak on the basis of your story. That's what I want you to tell, to tell us just a bit. What was your story? I understand there's culture, there's economic, there's finances. Well, these are issues that cut across. But particularly for you as Pamela, what has been your story? When I first ran for election, that was 2008, um, the people who encouraged me to run were my parents. And of course, like in many households, um, many parents sometimes don't agree on many, many things. But for mine, on this one thing, they agreed that I should run for office. And running at that point, we didn't as in have the resources to run, mm -hmm. but we just made that step. And I think making a step into politics, into anything, as in a journey of a thousand years, you know, of a thousand miles, mm -hmm. actually begins with the first step. Mm -hmm. Just making the first step is important. Doing the first thing mm -hmm. and the next thing. Mm -hmm. I've heard Oprah say so many times, yeah. the first step and the next step and the next step. Because it's always, it's also a journey of faith. It's also a journey of grace. Because none of us know if we're going to be there tomorrow. And a journey of favor. Yes, <laughs> because we'll still say, Kesho, nitafa? Nitafanya. nitafanya, inshallah. You know, like, as in, in terms of mungu aki, mm. akijalia. Akipenda. Akipenda, you know, like, we didn't even know Corona will be here. Mm -hmm. We didn't know many, you know, many things. Mm -hmm. What I would say that life is about hope, it's about grace, it's about wisdom, it's about justice, it's about intuition, it's also about just making the next step. Mm. And as Michelangelo um, said, that God only requires effort mm. of you. Mm -hmm. Just make an effort. All right, so for you it was really an issue of resources. Nonetheless, you moved forward, you forged yes. on. Yes. So then does it mean that the two-thirds gender rule is still a mirage? Is it a far-fetched idea? So how can we lose hope? <laughs> how can we lose hope as women? Uh -huh. what, the only thing we have is hope in this world. How can we not have hope that, that the, the two-thirds gender rule can actually be affected? Uh -huh. Life is about hope, and we remain hopeful in each and every situation. And that's why I say that women bring to the table not only wisdom, not only justice, not only sanity, but also hope and faith. Mm -hmm. How, you know, like, our world is a world of um, faith and hope. Because mm -hmm. every day the world is created. Today is a new day. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is going to be a new day. None of, none of us know what tomorrow may bring. Mm -hmm. We are just hopeful about it. Mm -hmm. But with hope, we also purpose and we make plans mm -hmm. in terms of hope. Mm -hmm. And making plans means that that you're hopeful that there will be a new tomorrow, mm. that you're hopeful that tomorrow may bring new things, new ideas, mm. new purposes, new glory, a new, you know, and a new day. Mm -hmm. So you think it's actually very practical to achieve that two-thirds gender principle? It's very practical. All right. Yeah. Now, we have had some political parties have the nomination fee for particularly women, youth aspirants, as well as PWDs ahead of the primaries in preparation for the general elections. When you look at uh, some of these things that some parties are doing, particularly this has been done by UDA, ANC, and Chama Chakazi of Moses Kuria, is it a step in the right direction towards ensuring that such kind of persons, you know, women, youth, or even PWDs, and you're a woman, can at least have a conducive environment to vie for these positions? 
Yes, yes, that's a very, very good step. Um, because like we've just discussed, many women have challenges in terms of uh, the finances to run for office. Many persons living with disabilities also do not have the resources to get into the democratic space of, you know, elective politics. Many youth, you know, mm -hmm. because of unemployment, they have the ideas, they have the innovation, they have the thoughts, because life begins at an idea. Yes. We can have a young person, a young woman who is out there, who has a very good idea on how they can lead their community. Mm -hmm. But they do not have the resources on, of, of how, I mean, on how they can, you know, as in how they can run mm -hmm. for the office. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is actually to have the first step for the parties to reduce mm -hmm. the fees for the persons living with disabilities, for the women and for the youth. Mm -hmm. That really helps a lot. What is the party you're vying on doing for, doing? for these women or youth or PWDs vying for various positions? Our party has reduced the fees okay. for the women. Okay. Yeah. So it's at least encouraging yes, women it's very encouraging. to vying for these positions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Makes a lot of sense. Now, there's still a bill before Parliament. That is the Elections Amendment Bill proposed mm. by Majority Leader Emos Kimunya to ban live streaming of election results. Well, it's still an ongoing conversation. And part of what is coming out is that if it passes, what does it mean for our elections going forth? If it fails, what exactly does it mean? And as, as it pertains to that particular bill, I want us to talk about three very pertinent issues. One of them being the timing in which this particular bill was was proposed, I mean, six months to the general elections, and it's being proposed now. Again, also the question of what it means when it comes to embrace of technology, as well as the majority of Kenyans who are used to tracking election results bit by bit. I know maybe um, I would not really delve into that because I've not uh, gone into the nitty gritty of the bill. Okay. So I would not generally just go into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but I mean, it's it's really been an ongoing conversation. Okay, let's just then use <laughs> on that particular question of Kenyans tracking results. We are used to that, tracking bit by bit of what has been happening from the polling center up until it gets to that national level. Let me just speak your mind on that. What do you just generally basically think about that? I basically think that that's a good idea to ask Kenyans what they would like. <laughs> You're really moving because, away from this question. <laughs> because I would, I would not be the person uh -huh. to say what Kenyans would want uh -huh. in terms of the bill. The Kenyans would need to be asked about mm. that. So I, would, I don't know much about the bill, so I would not delve into that. All right, all right, <laughs> makes sense. There's that question of coronation and endorsements. Uh, this past weekend, we saw Jimmy Wanjigi being installed as a leader by the Luo elders to try and battle it out with former Premier Raila Odinga. The other week, uh, the other time, rather, that was sometime last year, we again also saw National Assembly Speaker being coronated. And we've been having a lot of uh, politics of coronation, endorsements um, happening here and there. You haven't done that yet. We keep seeing and hearing politicians saying that it's an important process it is important it's that blessing is part of believability on the people what do you think about that is it as important as how some would say it's very important to okay. get endorsements it's very important to um, form collisions it's very important to have that support um, that is a, it's, it's a it's a factor in terms of uh, running for elective posts and there's still time there's it's still factor. time. It's, it's, it's a good thing uh -huh. because everybody, it's a good thing to get everybody to, you know, support your bid, mm -hmm. everybody to mm -hmm. go with you in this journey. Mm -hmm. It's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally support that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say that there's still time, does that mean that there's still time for you to do that or there's still time for what exactly? There's still time for every aspirant. You know, it's a journey. Is it, like, is it, do tomorrow, you plan to also get that? Yeah, tomorrow I would, I, would, I mean, like, it's, it's a journey. The running for, for, for political office, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. Like, the next bit would be to get endorsements, mm. to get, you know, yeah. It's, 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 it's every step that counts. It's, it's a step and a step and a step. The next step, like, yeah, that's, that's how it works.
<laughs> you're saying it's a journey is a step towards the right direction. That's yes. what you're basically saying. Yes. All right. If elected as Nairobi senator, the first three months, what should Nairobians expect? Basically, the work of a senator is um, representation, legislation, and oversight. Mm. Nairobis, Nairobians should actually expect that I would, I would represent them in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. I would work <coughs> to my best ability to provide oversight. And in that span, be able to legislate as per to what I would have done research about. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You said that one of your main reasons to buy for this seat is basically service delivery. Expound on that. You've lived in Nairobi. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> I don't know which estate and, and, and places you've grown up. Mm -hmm. It's not as it was um, many years ago. Mm. It's been... Uh, it's, it's been... You know, there's, there's been a slow... What do I call it? Spiral way that service delivery has just I think has just uh, it's, it's been terrible mm -hmm. water there in many estates in many uh, places water is not in the taps garbage collection does not work out the way it should mm. Nairobi has just been a total mess from the beginning I grew up in Umoja in his estate, mm -hmm. if you know Umoja, which is in Embakasi. And at that time, everything was working out. So it's not the way it is, but it can be better. And we can make Nairobi better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want you to get a bit practical. I know that, that, that perhaps that is part of your agenda or manifesto. When you say better, I mean, Every leader that gets into that space, they always tell us, we will make it better. There has been an issue of water, there's been an issue of uh, perhaps proper health services, you know, Nairobians or whatever part of the country, they're not getting it. So when you say making it better, just a bit practical about it. Because people from Moja might be watching you and they want to really see or hear Making what it say. better means that service delivery, I would, I would try to ensure that there is service delivery the way it should be okay. in Nairobi. Uh -huh. If it's water, water is running in the taps. Mm. Garbage collection is working. Are there roads being made from which constituencies? Have they been done? That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. In 20 seconds, that's your, that's your camera. Talk to Nairobi residents. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Nairobi. How are you? My name is Pamela Teka. I'm new to politics and I'm new to leadership. I come as a fresh face and I come with new plans and I come just as I am. I plan to um, do all I can to help Nairobi become better because the people of Nairobi deserve better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well said. People in Nairobi deserve better. Good place to end this conversation. Asante sana, Thank you. <laughs>